I've been crucified with Christ I've been crucified with Christ I no longer live but Christ lives in me We welcome you to our Bible study today on the subject of the apostolic doctrine of eschatology. Today, the title of our study is going to be The Importance of Study. Study to show thyself approved. The scripture in 2 Timothy 2 and verse 15 says this, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. What does the scripture say when it says study to show thyself approved? This sentence is the imperative mood that indicates a command being given. This is not optional, but this is every believer's responsibility. The object of having these Bible studies is that we are searching for answers to questions that involve the things that we have been taught and the things that are being taught. Next to politics, religion is the one area where people will yield very little ground. The idea that we could be wrong or even called into question is extremely unsettling to most people. We must admit that our views on theology, they are what they are simply because that is what we have always been taught. From our earliest days as believers, we were surrounded by those who believe just like us. Since we all believed alike, we all validated one another's faith. There was no reason for us to ever question if what we believed was true or not. In the book of Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 17, the scripture said this, He that is first in his own cause seemeth just but his neighbor cometh and searcheth him. We simply believed everything that we were taught, but when we started looking, that's when we started finding. And when we started finding, that's when we realized that all of the dots did not line up. In reality, we become what we are taught. The input of something determines the output of something. It affects the way we live, our lifestyle, and our service in the kingdom of God. Teachers and preachers, they are the guardrails on life's highway, but we can only follow them as they follow God. Notice what the scripture says in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 16 and 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 1. Wherefore, I beseech you, be ye followers of me, be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. We must follow those who follow Jesus. That's what it means to be apostolic of the apostles. They were told to continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. They were told to take heed unto the doctrine. Take heed unto the teaching. In Philippians chapter 3 and verse 17, the Apostle Paul said this, Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as you have us for an example. The Apostles are the ones that we must follow. They are the ones that we should emanate. We should teach exactly what they taught, believe exactly what they believed, and do exactly what they said when it pertains to salvation. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5 and 6, the Bible said this, For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power, and in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance, as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. And ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction, with joy of the Holy Ghost. God confirmed the ministry of the apostles. In our searching for truth, we 
must have the courage to ask questions, even when our questions are disturbing to ourselves and to others. We do not question the sincerity of those whose views we examine, but many of those views, they are in error. It is our desire to call into question then what men believe and teach as truth. In our searching for truth, we must always ask ourselves, what do the scriptures say? And what do the scriptures mean when they say it? In Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 12, the scripture said this, There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. There are many ways, there are many opinions, there are many ideologies that men have. But the way we seek to know is the way of Jesus Christ. He is the one that said, I am the way, the only way. I am the truth, the only truth. I am the life. I am the only life. In Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 13, God said this, And ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. When you search for God with all of your heart, you, you will be found of Him. It takes all of your heart in your searching. A lot of people are simply searching for a lifestyle. A lot of people are simply looking for a religion that fits their lifestyle. Some of us are sincerely looking to have a relationship with God. In John chapter 18 and verse 37, the scripture said this, Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Every one that is of the truth Heareth my voice. Those who are sincerely searching to know God in the truth, they're going to see and they're going to understand what God is saying. It is the blessing that comes to those who accept what the Bible says about past fulfillment and the accompanying hunger and desire for a better, deeper understanding of God's Word that we seek. When searching for the truth, there is a sense of wanting to know that develops. This sense is only satisfied by knowing scriptural facts. Remember, the faith that cannot be tested by scripture is the faith that cannot be trusted. Self-confidence that is born of personal study is very rewarding. In Hebrews chapter 10 verse 35, the Bible said this, Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. Knowing the facts, knowing the truth, brings an amount of confidence to your faith in God. When we insert the key of past fulfillment, looking to the past for the answers to our questions, instead of looking to the future, this illuminates a divine understanding of Scripture and the story of redemption. The chief function of prophecy is not to predict the future, but to bear testimony of the validity of Jesus as mankind's Savior, and to call the redeemed in Christ into harmony with the new covenant of the Lord Jesus Christ. We believe that only when a person understands the completeness of the Apostles' doctrine of eschatology the study of last things, the return of Jesus Christ, the judgment, and the resurrection. Can a true believer appreciate the story of redemption? We are built on a sure foundation. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 20. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. And in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 19, the scripture said this, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, 
the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. There's no other foundation that can be laid other than the one that was laid by Jesus and the apostles. The church today in the year 2022 stands in a different place than the first century church. Today, we stand on this side of fulfillment with the privilege of proclaiming a complete salvation message. The early first century church could only proclaim the imminence of the coming new covenant in which their salvation would be completed, though they eagerly anticipated it. Notice what the scripture says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 5, 9, and 10. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to, re to be revealed in the last time. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. And in Romans chapter 13 and verse 11, the Bible said this, And that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. It was all coming in the future for the first century church. In Revelation chapter 12 and verse 10, the scripture said this, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. This was what happened in the year A.D. 70 of the first century. The apostles held firmly to the knowledge of the imminent future that Jesus set before them. They were fully aware that their own day, their own time, was that of the last days. They knew that the powers of the age to come were being witnessed and experienced in advance of the end times. Their message was not about some far distant last generation of mankind, but their message was about the last generation of Israel's earthly commonwealth back in the first century. It is far better to proclaim a fulfilled and completed salvation than to preach a gospel of uncertainty, delay, and fearful watching. There are many church people today who are disenchanted with all of this frenzied prophetic speculation and repeated failures of latter-day prognosticators. According to the Bible, the last days, the end times, and the end of the world, the end of the age, have already taken place. In conclusion, it is only in studying the scriptures in their proper context that we discover the truths of God's word and their application to us today. May God bless you in your search for truth. If you have any question or any comment, you can contact us at the New Covenant Apostolic Church at gmail.com. I've been crucified with Christ. I've been crucified with Christ. I no longer.